Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is CJ. It's time for another quick look at the reef tank. So the topics for this vid going to be tips on picking the right kind of refractor meter, calibrating them as far as my opinion, and then also some hellacious parameter swings I've been having here lately. All my fault, but I'm going to give you the rundown anyways. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys didn't get a good look at that gold torch at the beginning, go ahead and rewind it and watch it again. I mean, I've been playing with these gel filters a little here lately. Just got them from Amazon. And I mean, it's amazing what kind of footage you can get, but not the rest of this vid. So you guys will have to wait on that. Let's go ahead and get back to the subject at hand. Now, speaking of Amazon, I know a lot of you guys shop on there. Me too. I'm a frequent shopper. You know, I've got a lot, gotten a lot of my equipment off of there, especially my, my skimmer and my uh, reactor for my tank. And I also got my refractor meter. Now, in my tank overview video way at the beginning when I first started the tank, I did mention getting the wrong type of refractor meter. I've been using it ever since, but it finally caught up with me and I'm going to kind of share with you all the difference and uh, maybe how you can avoid it and knowing you got the wrong type. Now, for those already in the hobby for a while, you're aware of this, but for anyone new, there are two different types of refractor meters you can get. One is for a reading salinity, which is the one you want, with, you know, the one made to make the hobby easier. And the other is made for brewers or people who make beer and you know need to measure sugar and it reads bricks now you can use both in either application technically you can with using conversions and math and all kinds of other crap but personally uh, wouldn't recommend it I'm willing to bet you guys can't tell which one is the right or wrong one I should pause the video and let you guys guess but we're gonna keep it rolling now as I mentioned before I ended up getting the wrong kind partly due to my negligence and also partly due to Amazon having a bad description on this particular uh, item. And I looked through, ended up getting bricks. So I was like, hell, you know, I spent money on this is all I have. So let's make it work. So through uh, looking up the conversions online and confirming the salinity at the pet store, I figured out that uh, 1.25 or 1.26 for salinity ends up being 4.4 or 4.5 on the brick scale. So, hey, if I use this, make sure it's 4.5. I know I'm in the ballpark and it's all good. Now the biggest issue with using this way and it ended up coming back to bite me was trying to adjust your salinity. With the scale being so small, you can move it up five or down five points and you will barely see it move on the brick scale. It really became difficult and really came, you know, started these issues I'm having with my parameters swinging. So I will get into that later. So eight months later, I finally pulled the trigger and purchase the correct refractor meter. If you look through here, it shows salinity. The scale is not condensed down into four little lines for me to try to figure out. It's right there just like you need it. So, so glad that I finally got my hands on a real refractor meter. My life is gonna be so much easier and also so much more difficult because I finally realized how much I've been sabotaging and nuking my own tank without even realizing it with these salinity and water changes. So. Shame on me, but hey, part of the best lessons I can show you guys are mistakes I'm making, so happy to share it with you. So now that I finally have the right piece of equipment, I didn't want to wing it or make any other mistakes, so I went a step further. In the hobby, a lot of people recommend, you know, calibrating these things using RO water, setting it to zero, and then measuring your salinity from there, which honestly, I've done that before too. It gets you, you know, it'll get you close enough at least, but... I didn't realize how much it was off until I picked up a bottle of this stuff. Now, it's going to be calibration fluid. Um, you can get different brands. It's not very expensive, but it basically will confirm uh, your refractor meter is set to natural seawater. So you put this in, tune your refractor meter to 1.026, and then you know you're good to go. So after measuring my tank before and after using this calibration fluid, I found out that the refractor meter was off by 0.003 on the high side so basically instead of my water being at one point you know zero two five like i thought it was actually at two eight or two nine without me knowing it so definitely a huge uh bit of info there hopefully it will save you guys some grief anyone that didn't know about it and for those that are in the hobby that use you know use RO water just to know hey you may still be off so grab a bottle of that or have your water checked at lfs just to make sure you're accurate so let's get to the tank. This all started, if you guys follow me, you know, I lost that multi-bar angel a little while ago. 
In my attempts of getting that fish to eat, I overfed my tank heavily and my phosphates and nitrates went through the roof. The small algae issue that I was dealing with turned into a big algae issue. So I had to get my hands in here with a toothbrush, turkey baster, scrub all the rocks, you know, blow all the detritus out, change out my filter floss, you know, and do it again and again. Once I got to the point to where I was ready for water changes, that's pretty much when all the mayhem started. Now, just a reminder, I was working with a refractor meter that pretty much was setting me up for failure. So running my normal routine for my five gallon water change, check my salinity. It was close. It looked like it was a little over, but, you know, I wasn't going to worry about it. When I added it to the tank, I kind of started thinking a little bit more and I kind of started to panic and I was like, maybe it's too high. So I decided to add some oral water and cut the salinity down some, at least I thought. So when I checked it again, it ended up showing way low to the point to where I have no idea how low it was because that refractor meter didn't show me. So I added more salt with a gallon of RO water, kind of mixing it really quick, and I dumped it in the back in a high flow and let it roll. As you can tell, the tank is totally pissed off, especially my leather coils, my finger leather, and my devil hands leather. I have pretty much, they're actually a little open more now than they were before but they were shriveled all the way down into almost nothing. So surprisingly, uh, I'm thinking they're making a comeback, at least I'm hoping so. I've seen this happen before when I've done water changes and it's probably for the same reason, but uh, I just wanna show you guys what happens as far as what things are affected um, whenever your salinity swings up and down. Not only my salinity, but some other parameters, I'll kind of explain that later. But the, the second core, the Priscilla pore, it was dealing with uh, some issues it was having from December when I had a similar problem with my salinity being lower than I thought. And as you can tell, it's not happy at all either. It was bouncing back at a period of time, but honestly, I'm not sure if it's gonna recover, especially with this damn anemone right here that's stinging the hell out of it on the right side. So we're gonna see what happens. If this uh, piece does not make it, if it bleaches all the way out, you know, I'll remove it and I'll keep it moving. We'll just put something else right here. Now, as far as overall coral losses, I haven't really lost anything. I just have two pissed off leather corals and a Priscilla pore that was already kind of mad from a couple of months ago that it's still angry. So, you know, I'm going to see what happens. The leather corals should bounce back. I'm expecting them to. And uh, that shouldn't be any issue. I'll tell you what, if there ever was a book on how to nuke your tank or kill everything, I'm really working on writing a nice copy of it because... You know, there's multiple phases to these issues I'm having. You know, one is the bad refractor meter, which is something I could have avoided. Two is going to be uh, <clears throat> my salt. Um, I actually ended up buying a new batch of recrystal because I ran out, got a new bucket, and I did not test the new water when I mixed it, meaning my parameters. You know, I've heard before that new batches sometimes can have different levels. Or they may not be consistent, so that's something I didn't check. And the third thing that I did wrong is going to be my auto top off of my calc. You know, I've been playing it safe before, just using a light solution, you know, a couple teaspoons for five gallons. That amount, it just dissolves. You don't have to really worry about it. I decided to kick it up a notch to see how it would affect my tank, and I went for the full concentration. You know, four teaspoons, I believe, is how much it is for that amount of water. Stirred it up let it set for a little while i was like hey it looks like it's getting clear threw it back on the tank i'm auto top off let it roll now i already knew that it would help buffer my alkalinity and my calcium in my tank and i knew that you know if you did too much and nuked your tank you could potentially spike your parameters and that is exactly what happened in my case now i did run it check right before this video my calcium is currently sitting around 500 or 520 highest i've ever seen it my uh, alkalinity, luckily, is still setting around 9 or 10. And my pH, which is the most scary thing out of those things that can affect your corals, has spiked as well. You know, my tank normally ran low pH, around 7, 7, 7, 8 is where it was hanging. It's up to around 8.1, 8.2. It's kind of hard to tell by the test kit, but it's definitely higher than it was. Now, that number is not a bad number. I'm just concerned as far as where it came from which is a, you know, a drastic change. So I'm going to monitor this situation. If it doesn't keep climbing, maybe it's just going to be the new normal with that amount of 
uh, calc I'm using with that, you know, w with that strength of solution. So if that's going to be the new normal, I'm not mad at it. But I do want to make sure it's not going to climb into an outrageous amount because if it does, I'm going to have to make sure I adjust my, you know, my calc usage. Now, I also ended up doing a check on my uh, nitrates and my magnesium. And the whole time, my nitrates have usually been below any kind of you know, detectable level. But I did get a reading at around 5 to 10 parts per billion on my nitrates. I'm going to attribute that to all that feeding and all that detritus and all that other stuff that I've been stirring up in my sand bed and my tank trying to get it out. I just may have, you know, may have released a few things. So my magnesium, which is uh, another surprise, nothing to do with calc. I'm going to chalk this up really to uh, the amount of salt and the new batch of salt. It's jumped up to uh, close to 1,500, I believe. And really, I was getting low on the end of the uh, the test kit, you know, before it changes colors. You know, it was only a few drops left, so it has to be towards the top of the scale. But it makes sense if my calcium is that high. So in a nutshell, not really concerned with my numbers. I'm just concerned with the roller coaster ride I took to get to them which like I said, is everything you don't want to do. So I'm glad I can share that with you guys. Anyone that's trying to follow me step by step, please don't. Just improve on whatever I'm showing you. Get a tank better than mine, have better maintenance than me, and just learn from my mistakes. That's pretty much my goal. I'm not going to teach you guys. I'm just going to share my experience. That's the, that's the plan. Uh, one thing I failed to mention was my livestock. Uh, the fish, no effect. I didn't lose any fish. Do have new, two new clownfish in there. Um, I'll share those with you another time. And then as far as losses, my cleanup crew was the biggest, the biggest loss. Uh, I pretty much assassinated every snail in my tank. They couldn't handle the swing. They all died. Got to replenish those. Some hermit crabs are still alive. And my starfish, which I liked, is melted and he's gone too. So any invertebrates that couldn't really handle it, they did die. So uh, other than that, video has been dragging on way too long so hopefully you guys learned something or enjoyed it or hey just gave you something to do either way definitely like comment subscribe hey you guys do what y'all do y'all be easy hey happy reefing peace